Project Blue Book aired in the UK in May of 1979. Known as Project UFO in the States, this became a staple TV show for the nine-year-old B to watch on a weekend. Already an avid sci-fi fan, thanks to reruns of the original Star Trek, I used to absorb any and all science fiction shows and movies of the time. But this show always stuck with me, which was why when I heard the History Channel of all things, was producing a show called Project Blue Book in 2019, I was super hyped. The description seemed to mirror the show of my youth. Two men working for the United States Air Force investigating UFO sightings for Project Blue Book. What we ended up getting, however, was far from what I wanted or expected. Project UFO, I'll call it by its American title to make it easier to differentiate between the two shows, of the 70s was something akin to a detective-style investigation program, with dramatic license to change real-world UFO sightings for the TV. Names were changed, locations too at times, but they kept close enough to the reported sightings that those in the know would recognise the events transpiring on the TV. Created by Jack Webb, well known at the time for such shows as Dragnet, Adam-12 and Emergency, this followed his style of writing where the characters were just after the facts, ma'am. Some have described it as a forerunner to the X-Files, just without the anti-government paranoia, and in some ways I can see that. The banter between the two men, Major Jake Gatlin and Sergeant Harry Fitz, in Season 1 played by William Jordan and Kasky Swain, and Captain Ben Ryan, played by Edward Winter, and Fitz in Season 2, is down to earth, it's funny at times, and endearing, despite the fact they stick to how an enlisted man would address and talk to his superior officer, unless given permission to talk freely, of course which Harry was known to do at times. Season 1 tended to show that, after nearly every sighting investigated by the dynamic duo, they would find a logical, natural explanation for what people saw. But not always. Some ended up being unknown. Gatlin even tells Harry Fitz at one point that as they cannot prove a negative, their job was to prove that each UFO sighting was actually real. For season two, they changed things up a little bit, and although the two Air Force men mostly found a down-to-earth reason for the sightings, there were a lot more of these unknowns, and the last few minutes of the episode tended to show that in actual fact there was indeed a UFO. At the end of the majority of the episodes, over the seal of the Department of the Air Force came the text The United States Air Force, after 22 years of investigation, concluded that none of the unidentified flying objects reported and evaluated posed a threat to our national security. And that was indeed how the real Project Blue Book ended. The show leaves it up to the viewer, however, to decide for themselves if the encounters portrayed on screen could have been real or not. As of August 2010, the rights to the series have become somewhat uncertain, and to my knowledge it isn't currently shown anywhere in the world. However, it is still on YouTube, although the quality does leave something to the imagination. In 2019, the History Channel aired the first two seasons of Project Blue Book, starring Aidan Gillen, possibly best known for his portrayal of the conniving Littlefinger in Game of Thrones, as Dr. J. Allen Hynek, the historical figure renowned for his work on Blue Book and other UFO research, who started out a sceptic and turned into a believer. And Michael Malarkey as Captain Michael Quinn, a totally fictional character, although possibly inspired by the real-life Captain Edward J. Rappelt, the first director of the real-life Project Blue Book. 
Whereas the 70s TV show Project UFO had shown real cases as honestly as possible, only changing people's names and locations, Project Blue Book took the opposite path of keeping the names and the locations true and pretty much changing everything else. It was lambasted by UFO researchers for its historical inaccuracies, some claiming it mixed in absurd and invented details while still claiming the show was based on real events. Another change from the 70s show was its heavy dose of government conspiracy behind the scenes and how our heroes had to fight the generals in charge and even the CIA to find the truth. The show opened with ratings of about 3.8 million viewers per episode, but during the two seasons it was on the air, this steadily dropped away till it was cancelled in May of 2020 with an average of around 2.4. Still not too bad for a network show. I think possibly it also suffered from a little overhyping. At the time, the History Channel was marketing the show everywhere, on TV ads, billboards, everywhere. And maybe people got the idea it would be more than it actually turned out to be. Although I don't place it as high as the 70s show, although the two were never supposed to contend with each other, and I wonder if the creator of the newer show had even heard of Project UFO, I still enjoyed it. However, despite incredible visuals and CGI work, fine acting from our two leads and the supporting cast, and strong writing, it wasn't really anything new or different. Nowadays, TV shows about the supernatural or UFOs are a dime a dozen. It was up against a viewership who, if they were interested in such things, were oversaturated with the subject. Also, as with me, it's possible a lot of the audience was after something more down to earth. This was the History Channel after all. Something more historically accurate. For me, they missed the prime opportunity to take UFO sightings seriously. To follow the Project UFO example and make it more believable and more accurate to the cases they were investigating. Whether the History Channel simply didn't believe that would draw in a large enough audience, although considering it is the History Channel as I said, and they, had, and they are known for accurate documentaries, that reason does fly in the face of logic, but I simply don't know. The fact is though, that it never grabbed a big enough fan base and lost over a million viewers in the two years it was on the air. Personally, I would recommend watching both shows, because in their own way, they are faithful to the styles of TV programming they were made for. One more accurate and true to history, and one hugely fictionalised and action orientated. Actually, if I was going to compare the newer Blue Book to any other show on TV, it would be the late 90s sci-fi show Dark Skies. That show gave us another fictional view of historical events to show us that aliens and government conspiracy was behind a lot of them including the JFK assassination. As the tagline of the show stated, history as we know it is a lie. It only lasted a single season, but it had a huge amount of potential, excellent writing and strong acting performances by the cast. But as with a lot of shows made for a sci-fi audience, it met its end far too soon. So in closing, I would have enjoyed watching another season or two of Blue Book, in the hope they began to make the episodes and investigations more accurate to the real life events, and I can always go back to Project UFO if I am in need of a more historically faithful TV show about close encounters. For now though, all we can do, as they say, is watch the skies. <laughs>